Hi, welcome to part 8 of my Tamiya Wild Dagger Land Rover Discovery build. Now first of all, if you like this project and you've been watching along, I'm going to give a shout out to Paul McNamara 16. He's doing a similar project, a Land Rover LR3 uh, Discovery on a TL01 chassis. And if you like this, you should definitely go and check that out. And I'm going to try and put a link to his channel somewhere up there. Let's hope that works. Hi Paul. Now the updates I've made to this since the last video, I've changed the front body mounting to hidden body posts under the bonnet or the hood. I've fitted a gearbox strengthener on the back and a reversed wheelie bar on the front to do the same job but also to help it get over obstacles. And I've fitted a full light kit. So first of all, the uh, front body posts are pretty simple. I've just poked them up through the fake engine there just to make it a lot easier than the old system I had a couple of extra brackets underneath and the uh, original mounting points are still the clod buster axle brackets which are hidden by the doors so I'll pop them off Now there's one of the gearbox strengtheners, uh, they're actually for uh, Wild Willy and the other WR02 chassis, uh, they're just a, a small piece of alloy, they come from Tamiya, they're a Tamiya hopper. The uh, standard gearbox on a Wild Dagger or Jewel Hunter or all those kind of trucks comes with a front bumper and when you take that off, which I have done on this, and you take the bracket off that held it on, you're left with this. Now there's screws at the top and all the way around, but there's nothing holding it together at the bottom. And what will happen is under power it just flexes slightly and opens up. So that just slots on there and secures it. Probably wouldn't be a major problem, but just in case I've done that. So that's on the back. Now on the front, looks kind of strange with the body off, is a wheelie bar from a wild dagger, I uh, beg your pardon, from a wild wheelie again because they use the same gearbox so that's doing the same job but with the body on it actually fits pretty well, I don't know if you can see that on the camera kind of works like uh, an under bumper sump protection on a full size car, it just helps it get over obstacles that little bit more easily There you go, you can see it in that shot. So I haven't tested it with that yet. I've done a, an outdoor run, test run with this, which I'll probably put in a couple of uh, highlights of it right now for you to see. Right, that video you just watched, and I, I have got a longer version I'm going to put up separately. That was without that, but uh, the rest of the truck was the same. Uh, the wheelie bar actually came off this. Which is my Jaw Hunter, which is exactly the same as a Wild Dagger. It just comes with a different body and uh, different colour wheels I think and it comes with an ESC, a standard, rather than the uh, Wild Dagger came with a mechanical speed controller. But I've actually put a metal wheelie bar on that now. Exactly the same as the plastic one. And then I fitted the upgrade Tamiya wheels to it. Now you're supposed to fit one of these in the centre but uh, I fitted two, just gives it a bit more stability when it wheelies because otherwise it tends to do that. The diff isn't locked either, so then one wheel spins and as soon as it touches the ground it flips over. Also, on this truck, another piece I'm going to be stealing, eventually, will be the shock tower. It's, uh, it's, it sits up about that much higher than standard, the standard shocks mount there. 
and uh, the front, they kept bending on this truck because it's very fast and I crash it a lot. So I swapped it for one that I'd made myself out of a, a quite a thick chopping board, just a plastic chopping board. So eventually when I do the back one as well I'm going to put those on the Land Rover project. Now the holes for this was, were quite awkward to do because obviously when you've got a clear body shell it's easy to drill the holes before you paint it or at least mark them up underneath, uh, on top, I think of them. But this was pretty awkward to do so what I did was I just unscrewed this whole fake engine and just replaced it with a piece of paper that I taped inside and then when I placed it on the on the chassis I just poked them through transferred that to that and just drilled the holes and that worked out pretty well the final thing I've done to this now as you can see by these wires is the light kit now these connect to channel 1 and 2 just a couple of Y cables and that enables the light kit to come on the headlights come on when you drive forwards brake lights come on when you hit the brakes the indicators go on left or right depending on which way you're turning and that was reasonably straightforward mounted the control box in there on the roof the wires are long enough mostly to be hidden unfortunately the only downside the back wires are a bit long and so they kind of they're just hanging there but uh, I can always extend them if I keep catching them when I when I'm putting the body on and off but other than that there I've rooted them around under the doors and behind the dash The light buckets were only 3mm, so I had to drill the main two out to 5mm bulbs. The, uh, the indicators are only 3mm, so that was fine. And when I fitted the front, I took the light buckets out and forgot that I had to pass them through those holes first. So that took me a while to undo that mistake. That was pretty stupid, but got there in the end. Yeah, I'm pretty pleased with that. So I'll just quickly show you the lights working and that'll be it for this video. I did originally have springs in this, or I kept the original springs that held it up while you were doing the body clips, but um if you've seen any of the previous run videos, you'll know every time it hit a bump, it just shot straight up, which was really annoying. It still doesn't sit quite right. It will clip down, but since since I changed, lowered the body post slightly, there's, there's a slight bit of clearance problems inside, so I'll have to work that out. That's okay. There's a slight delay, so when you go park, park throttle, they don't actually come on. You have to go to a higher throttle to get to come on, which is a bit disappointing. But if I go ahead and do what I was thinking of doing anyway, which is fitting slower crawler motors, that shouldn't be such a problem, because you won't be needing to... You'll be using more throttle for the same speed anyway, so... And at the back, you've got, you've got the brake lights. And then, obviously, indicators depending on which way you turn it's also the option to run some uh, reversing lights which I thought came with this but they didn't unfortunately and some spotlights which are on all the time and some extra brake lights that just come on when you brake, they're not on 50% the rest of the time like these are. So I'm quite happy with that. Apart from the fact the rear lights kind of go off to the side, so they're not really that visible from behind, you have to be at an angle. And apart from those wires which I need to lengthen, I'm probably going to end up using a similar body mounting system on the back and running a bar across from one side to the other with a couple of original body posts. So then I'll need to sort that out if I do that just to save me messing around with a screwdriver each time I want to take it off. 
that's it for this video don't forget to check out Paul McNamara 16's channel he's got loads of different projects that you'll probably enjoy not just the Land Rover uh, I think he originally had it as a drift car and then he's resprayed it white and he's put it on a, a trail truck and now he's gone brushless with it so it actually wheelies pretty impressive so feel free to rate comment and subscribe and I'll see you next time thanks for watching